What up, y'all? It is Alex. It is Thursday of Boards of Canada week, and we are going to break down the track Happy Cycling. This one's really cool. I'm a big fan, and it relies a lot on groove. So let's go ahead and get into it. Right at the beginning, you're going to hear this little pipe melodic piece that's just going... So that's going to keep repeating. We also have a hat that's playing eighth notes. So it's going one and two and three and four. This hat's really important because it kind of gives us a driving feel to the track. It gives us a nice steady beat and sets the tempo for us. We also hear this small snare playing on the two and the four that's rising up during this intro. is still rising. I put extra something. This is just like a little sound that accentuates the four beat in this case. It happens here and there throughout the track. So that's just something to take note of if you want. Now we're going to start to hear this kick and tom slowly start to rise up as well. And that's happening after eight bars. So right now it looks like we're working with a pace of eight bar intervals. We'll see if that continues throughout the track. I also want to note the tom is playing at about the same time as that pipe sound slash flute sound, whatever you want to call it. Which is just cool to note because again, this track's really going to be reliant on groove. So by having these two elements that are different but also playing the same rhythmic pattern happen at the same time that really just accentuates that rhythm and really gives you more groove. Okay, so now I have an angsty vocal sound coming in, which you can you'll hear it start right here. Notice that's happening after eight bars of the addition of the kick and the tom. So we are still moving at eight bar intervals for this track in the sense that it seems that ch major changes are happening every eight bars. So this is pretty big by adding this angsty vocal. We're now creating even more tension. It's, it gives a bit of despair to the track, this angsty vocal. And then we get this spooky snare, which is really cool. And it's just a cool sound. It just keeps the groove going. It gets us deeper and deeper into this song. And I just want to point out, it seems like this track's using repetition to its advantage. It's really trying to... Like, I feel like the way that it's driving right now, it, it, it really is pulling you deep into this groove and, and kind of getting you lost in it, which is cool. And I, th I think that's kind of what they're going for. So we had that eight bars with the voice. Then we have the crazy snare. I put this thing here it says who cares because it's a subtle thing but it's this little sample that's getting dropped every now and again listen for it you hear that it sounds like a hat or something with a delay on it but i just put it there because part of why like this track is going to keep grooving i'm telling you for like three minutes or something just on a, a very similar loop and I think th samples like this are important because if we're hearing an eight bar loop, even getting like a little bit of variation that's subtle can make it more interesting than the previous eight bar loop. And so it just kind of keeps us going. But OK, let's listen a little bit more. So we, we've gotten through the first eight bars. I made this one pink because it is slightly different sounding than the green one. So this again is the angsty vocal. So listen to the angsty vocal green here. Now listen to it here. Hopefully you hear the difference. It's a subtle difference and frankly it it's pretty small, but I just like to make that note because we I've noticed Boards Canada does this a lot where for something that they could easily just duplicate like that, they'll oftentimes make the second version of it a little bit different, which I think is cool because now 
even though we're still working in eight bar intervals, they're sounding a little bit different than each other, um, each eight bars. And so even though they're basically the same, the fact that they sound a little bit different is I think gonna help keep this groove interesting for a longer period of time, which is important because we're gonna hear this groove for a very long time. So, okay, we're on our second eight bars with the angsty vocal in, and we're still just driving into this groove. And let's see what happens at the end of that eight bars. So now we're, we're starting to get deep into this. So at the end of the second eight bars with the angsty vocal, we're now getting this spooky sounding bell. And I, it's just a really nice sound. It's a predominant lead. So once this comes in, we understand, okay, we're now getting a lead that's more forward. And it's this is really what we, we need to pay attention to. So it stands out a little bit from the groove. It kind of floats on top of it. And then after that happens, we get this strange space bassy synth thing. That's just, you know, making this eight bars more interesting as well. And then we're also getting this, I called it Bop Kid, this vocal sample at the end, which I think is a very prominent hook. I think that just sounds really cool and it stands out easily. So that's this new eight bar sequence here is interesting because again, we have all these lead elements in this hook. So that happens. And now when we go into the next part, we get another hook, which in this case is a seagull. You might say this isn't a hook. I think it is, though, because it's such a memorable sample that it just sticks into my head very easily. So that's cool, because when you get a big hook like that, that gives you like another tool you can use with the listener. Because now, in addition to everything else happening, they're wondering when that hook's going to come back. Them wondering is just another way that you're the producer's getting like some control, which is cool. So let's uh, hear how that goes. I also put mom because there's this little mop. And yeah. So this eight bars is interesting because we don't get another dose of the space synth, which is interesting because, you know, we heard it here, so we might expect it to happen again. But I feel like the fact that they don't do that is cool because it shows a great exercise in patience. And they actually did already give us something new with the seagull and with that hook over here. So we kind of already had a lot of things to take us out of the zone that we're able to just let that play out again. But yeah. There's going to be a big change here. So basically this melody from earlier is going to open up more. Again, we, it's often nice to get some variation. We don't want to just hear the same thing again. I mean, maybe we do, but they decided, no, let's, let's change it up here. So let's hear how the melody differs now. Super cool. So this new melody just takes us deeper into the story. We get a little snippet of the story. When I say the story, I mean like each melody can kind of tell an emotional story. And this one was just a short snippet. And then here we go deeper into it. So I feel like if we just listen to those bells, just listen to the bells. There's something about the intervals, which is like the difference in between the notes that makes this melody, to me, it seems very introspective sounding, which is big for Boards of Canada. But it's nice because at the very end here, 
the two the way the notes play it gives you this warm feeling so i feel like there's kind of all this look inside look inside kind of nostalgic kind of melancholic vibes but then it resolves at the end which makes you go oh it's okay so that's it's just a cool melody and part of why i think like if we just look ahead look they're gonna keep playing this melody over and over again i think they're able to do that because it is just such a cool melody we're gonna start to notice that that weird space synth is now coming in every 16 bars so let's just uh, keep listening <laughs> Sounded like a dropped pan. So they have this 16 bar loop here, which includes two cycles of that bell melody, one cycle of space sound, then this sequence of samples. So they did that exact thing right here, but they just do it again because it's such an interesting loop that one might wonder, hey, you're going to really have us listen to the same thing for looks like about a minute or over a minute. But yeah, they are because it's so interesting to listen to that we're fine with it. Now we're getting another change. They're going to add a bass line. But then they're just going to let this loop with the bass line ride for a long time. So let's listen. to interrupt i just want to point out i love how you don't hear the bop kid thing here because remember earlier how i said when you introduce a big hook by not including the hook you're also giving the listener something because when this happened i was really expecting it because it, i just remembered it so much from here but it didn't happen and so the fact that i didn't hear it was really cool because then when it started this loop i felt different about this loop because my expectation was not met in a good way though. And I was like, oh wow, what, what happened? So that's all. <laughs> five minutes and six seconds of the track and we are finally getting a big change so yeah we've basically been grooving for a really long time i mean the drums joined the game at 40 seconds like full on 
and now we're at about five minutes and five seconds so over four minutes of that groove or more or less of that groove so that's pretty long time for me at least okay so let's see where we go here So I actually created this part B. So a lot of things are changing. First off, let's talk about things that are changing with the drums. So the snare gets bigger. So I symbolize that by putting another dot above, which suggests that the snare is being layered and sounds bigger. I noticed the same thing with the hats on the ones that are going one and two and three and four and those seem bigger too. So I layered those. So check out the difference between the hats and the snares. to compare it to this part. Honestly, they might just be brighter sounding, but basically there is a change in the snare and the hat. And then the kick is hitting more often too. We're also getting a new melody. So let me talk about this real quick. So the most obvious one is the one that's going so I've labeled it here as melody two. You could you could label this a few things. I'm just saying melody two because earlier this bell melody was sort of melody one, at least in terms of it being the most like obvious, prominent big melody. But if you want to be specific, you could say this pipe sounds a melody two, I think. I think that's accurate. So whatever. In terms of like big melodies that are moving around a little bit, this is the second one because we had that bell one from earlier. So yeah, so I drew that out here. So there's also a little callback melody. They, it's It might actually be the same synth. I maybe could have included them on the same track, but I just wanted to separate it because notice how this part makes a little flourish and then this part responds to it. Just listen to how the melodies talk to each other. It's pretty nice. I just thought that was cool and I wanted to separate it so y'all could see because it's just pretty how they bounce off of each other. Now we get a different bass line. And that's about it. A lot has changed, right? The angsty vocal I think is gone too. So yeah, so now we have new melodic parts and a new bass line. So that's that's a lot and that's that's a lot of change plus a little bit different drums. And so that really just pushes us into this B section. And you may be wondering, what are we going to do in the B section? We're going to groove on it for a while, just like we did earlier, but not as long this time. Cool. So we kept the bop kick thing in as well as the space synth, but you'll notice after eight bars here, we're adding another melody, which is kind of like this horn synth sound. Really great how these melodies work. Sometimes when you introduce a new melody, you have to totally take out an old one so they don't clash, but it's just nice the way that these notes hit, these notes seem to fill in the gaps a little bit. Like especially if you listen to this last note here, it takes a moment, it's dragging out, and as it's fading, you get these little jingle here. It's just nice. That's part of why people like this track because you have lots of melodies that work well together. So we're gonna have that for eight bars and then another melody is gonna come in. It's a pretty simple melody. It's just playing little notes here and there, little twinkles. They're going to just 
let us listen to it again because it's everything's working together so nicely. <laughs> is pretty simple it's just gonna be this weird reverse sample that's kind of it sounds like a sample that was stretched maybe pitched down a bit and reversed and it's probably just of people talking or from a movie or something like that and while that happens these the, and while that happens these melodies the the main melody too and then the callback and the bass line are just gonna play out and fade into the sunset <laughs> just noticed you've probably noticed it too that that callback at the end of the four bar phrase doesn't always happen it'd be interesting to look back and see if that was the case from earlier i just don't want to do it right now because yeah i like how boards of canada will make they'll have an eight bar loop where it's basically the same thing playing every four bars but the way that they do it is they make it so it's not exactly the same thing playing every four bars because if you just change up a little something then it becomes an eight bar thing rather than a four bar thing. And an eight bar thing is more to listen to. So you're able to repeat it more times in some cases. And yeah, it's just cool. So let's keep listening. They're basically gonna end. And there you have it, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you found this helpful. The last breakdown for Boards Canada Week is going to come out tomorrow, which is May 22nd, 2020. And that one's going to be cool. Please subscribe. Listen to the track Response by myself. I put it out about a month ago. So if you go on Spotify, type in Alex Wilcox Response. Please give that a listen. You can follow me on Instagram at Alex Wilcox. You can follow response on Instagram at response.response. .response. And yeah, have a nice day. Have a nice night. Subscribe and talk to you soon.